Look at the two looking at the camera right now. Those are nice sized fish. Those are the ones I want. There we go. That's a good one. Nice. I'm telling you. Having sonar is probably one of the best ways to uh, put more fish on the ice. Oh, look at that. That is a tank. That's what I'm after. Especially when it comes to perch fishing on the ice. So I was able to come out here and drill a couple holes and get on top of a really massive school that I have on the camera here now. You can see this massive school on the bottom. I had to drill a few holes before I found it. And, you know, it's so critical just knowing that you're on top of fish and you can see your gear, the depth the fish are at. It just makes you such a better ice perch angler. So today I thought I'd go over some tactics and tips for putting more perch on the ice. And first and foremost among those is going to be incorporating a sonar into your 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 gear. No, no, not you. How about you don't have the you have the ball in your mouth, not the that guy's a fatty. There he has got him. I just see too many people come out here without there we go. Without sonar and they just can't get on fish. They'll just sit there and pound a hole while the guy next to him is just bringing fish up after fish up. And it's because that person can see the fish, the depth they're at. They know they're on top of fish. Even being in the shelter, I'm still getting iced up. I need to have the door open so you guys can have some light and actually see me in here. There we go. <laughs> Let them fight over it a little bit. And as you can see on this camera, the bite down there sometimes is really light. And sometimes they're just grabbing the, the head of the jig and not the, the tail end. I'm fishing in... 34 feet of water, so I don't like fishing something really small. Um, I like to have a little bit heavier jig that gets me down there. But they are very finicky biters. They're very light biters, so I really recommend either a spring bobber um, or a rod that has an extremely sensitive tip. Now, for me, because I'm fishing at depth, I really have to have uh, a rod with a decent amount of backbone. And because of that, I have a you know, carbon fiber, graphite rod. And so the spring bobber makes the most sense for me um, because of, I need that backbone on that rod to set the hook at these more extreme depths. That's a nice size fish. Got him. So if I didn't have the camera, I would be 100% relying on, oh, look at that fatty, on the spring bobber or the tip of the rod to give away whether or not I have a fish on. But the camera adds a lot of certainty to whether or not the fish has that gear in its mouth. It's one of the reasons why I feel like a camera really one-ups my game even more. I consider that like the holy trinity of ice perch fishing is sonar, a highly sensitive either spring bobber or rod tip, and a fishing camera, an underwater fishing camera. I'm using the Markham Pursuit HDL as far as sonar goes, just anything, just really, I'm not relying on the sonar to look at how individual fish are responding to my jig. I'm really relying on it just to locate these wandering schools of perch. There we go. Look at that guy, he's coming in a hurry. Ooh, that's like perchzilla. Got him. <laughs> he's a hungry boy. That's a fanny. I managed to get... Oh, I still have my bait. That's crazy. Got five so far on just that one waxworm. 
Okay, on this fish, I'm not gonna look at the camera at all. I'm gonna close the camera so I can't see it. And I can see my sonar. I'm just gonna drop down right into that cloud of perch down below me right now. There's a huge cloud down there. You can see my jig going past the 20 foot mark right now and all those perch down below, that giant wall of perch. I'm gonna get right in the midst of that school and then I'm gonna pull up and stop. You see some fish coming up to check out my gear as they go down through that school. There he is. Woo, I just saw the bobber lift up. Ooh, feels heavy. This might be a yellow purchasaurus. Oh, it is a purchasaurus. <laughs> oh my God. That thing is a beast. You know they're big when you can lip them. Look at that. Nice. That's a purchasaurus rex. And the reason I can detect that is I've got, got braid on here, so I'm running a four pound braid. Let's me uh, really detect that light, but like, let's me detect those light bites. That one, the, the tip actually lifted up rather than going down. So the weight of the jig was taken off as he picked it up. There's my jig. Look at all those perch. Oh, got him. <laughs> Love those titanium uh, guides on these custom rods from Thorn Brothers. You just flick them, and they spring back. And when they spring back, it kicks all the ice off super fast. Well, look at all the fish coming in on that. He doesn't have it. Oh, he stole my bait. Did you see him? That big guy just stole my bait. What a turd. Another thing you can do if you're getting bait stripped like I am on the last few fish is to use some sort of plastics plus bait. That way if you get stripped, you might have enough to tempt another fish to bite. So let's try that. I'm going to go get some plastics. So I'm going to use roadside minnows. This is their perch eye, the plastic perch eye. And then we'll run that with the bait as well. And we'll see... If we get stripped, then we'll see if we can get them to take that, just the plastic on there. Normally, it's not that cold here in Washington State. Usually, our lows are more in the uh, 10s and 20s, but we had a massive cold snap. So, this morning, it's negative 4, negative 6. And even with uh, being in a shelter and running a Mr. Buddy heater, Still well below freezing in here. Just kind of icing up my braid. It'd actually be one of the better days to have a uh, fluorocarbon mainline rather than braid. Braid tends to ice up a little bit more. All right, there's the gear. Oh, they're aggressive now. They're just not hitting it. There you go. Oh, okay, he might have just stripped me. See, my bait got shredded there. So now all I've got is the plastic on there. There's a little bit of meat left. There we go. Got him. Okay, nice. So I got just a tiny bit of meat in there, but I got that plastic on there. I just want to get right back down into these fish. Keep going after them, so I'm just going to drop straight back down. That's when it pays to have plastics. Even different size lures uh, can make a difference. These, sometimes these fish will respond better to a more aggressive presentations. Sometimes they want something really small. Sometimes they want different baits. And then there are days that they'll just hit anything. Okay. That guy's busy looking at the camera and not paying attention. Oh, there he... Ooh. 
Somebody's gonna want that. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. The one that was on the camera was big too. He was hungry. Oh yeah, chunker. Look at that. Dang. That is a nice fish. Only takes about a half dozen of those to make a good meal for a couple people. Look at that. Alright, there's the jig. Who is going to be our first cusp? Ooh, look at that one. That's the one I want right there. Come on, buddy. I know you're hungry. That one's a little small for my taste. Ooh, that one right there. The one in front of the camera right now is a really nice fish. That one's not so bad. He's he's pretty aggressive. I'm trying to get him to strip me there. You see how he shook that bait? Okay, all that's left now is the plastic. Let's see if we can get one to take just the plastic. Oh, did you see that? So just having that little bit of plastic on there is really still enough right now. There you go. See, no bait on there. It was totally shredded. Just having the plastic eye on there has made it possible to convert that fish. Oh, that is a nice one. Whoa. Right now, rather than wasting time getting back down there, look at that perch on in there. That's cool. Rather than wasting time rebaiting, I'm just going to dump this right back down there with just the plastic. See if I can get them on just that plastic perch eye. They were acting pretty aggressive there. They seem to be on an aggressive feed. They're not always like that. And that can change throughout the day. But if they're willing to hit just the plastic, then I'm not going to waste my bait. So let's get back down there and see if we can get them to take it. Can't find my bait. There it is. That's just got the perch eye on it. That one looks pretty aggressive. Oh, that's a nice fish. Come on, somebody get your marks lined up. Missed it. Oh, this one's coming. He's going to eat it. See, they're a little more cautious now with that plastic. He's chewing on it, but see, he didn't take it all the way in. They're less enthusiastic with the plastic there. Let's see if I can get that guy's attention. Oh, striking a miss. There you go. Nope, I guess not. Missed it. Thought I had him. Let's try again. That's a little guy. That would have been a good one. I took it right out of his mouth. Miss. That's the smaller of a fish. This guy's going to give it another shot. Ugh, boy, he's terrible aim, huh? That guy needs glasses. I definitely seem to be less enthusiastic about the not having... Ooh, come on. Oh, no. Nope. Not having bait on there. The bait does seem to be making a difference. No. Nope. See, they're just grabbing it by the tail there. They want... Oh, that guy took it away from his buddy. Ooh, get, get it in your mouth. No. They're just tapping it. He's just got the head. They're not grabbing that hook where the meat normally is. There we go. Took a little longer, but finally made it happen. It's a plastic. I think the having the wax worm on there makes a bigger difference to get a faster turnaround. Now today I've been really fortunate that the school I found after drilling a few holes um, 
it's just stayed basically put and that's not really that uncommon with these big schools of perch wandering on these basins and flats in the winter time which is why you'll see groups you know 50 feet away slaying fish and then the group next to them uh, isn't touching anything and that's because these schools they're not really as mobile as you expect um, they'll really just hang tight in one spot and they won't move all that much and so if you're not willing to move especially if you haven't dropped right in on top of one of these schools look at all those fish that is crazy like 20 of them right there that's a nice fish come on god whoa that's a tank that is a tank If you're not willing to pick up and move and you're not sitting on top of one of these schools look at that beast and yeah you're gonna have a much tougher day so don't be afraid to move if you're not getting a lot of fish if you're just picking off ones and twos if you're on the edge of one of these big schools you know just a matter of moving 10 15 feet in one direction can make a huge difference yeah that's where these imaging systems like panoptics really come come into their magic because you can scout out in all those directions um, and not have to drill holes to explore they like it moving and then just after it stops moving they get excited you see that come on you just grab the head see Ooh, that guy got it all the way in there. Nice. Well, I've already got 15 on the ice, and I've only been here about an hour and a half. So, I'm going to keep working my way through them. Beautiful fish, though. A lot of 12, 11 to 12 inch fish. A couple even bigger than that. I'm gonna keep working through these school until I get to my 50. That's about all I can tolerate to fillet in one day. But just remember those tips I gave you today. The main thing being sonar, highly sensitive rod tip, underwater fishing camera, a non stretchy mainline, either braid or fluorocarbon. Have a variety of baits and a variety of size lures. Be ready to change it up. And don't be afraid to move if you're not catching lots of fish because these schools of yellow perch are not that mobile. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.